Okay, because so many people come to us, and we do a lot of these types of agreements. We get involved in all kinds of contracts, as you can imagine, we're a law firm. Um, distribution agreements, supply agreements, quality agreements, you name it. We get involved in a lot of these kinds of document documents. And one thing that I always try to remind my clients, especially if there's some resistance in terms of maybe the level of detail that we're insisting as we draft these documents is, you are probably in a very good relationship with the other party at this point in the process when you're actually negotiating the agreement or the contract. And everyone kind of, it's kind of like a marriage. Hey, you go to the altar and you say, you know, no one really expects that in six months time you're gonna be in divorce court, right? Um, nobody's anticipating a separation agreement when they go to the altar. And so in a contract situation, it's kind of the same thing. Hey, we have this great supplier over here who can provide something that's very essential to us. Let's get the deal done. You know, let's just get it done. Let's sign off. Let's get it done today. Well, wait a minute. You know, you're paying me for that 1% of the time that something goes wrong, right? You're, you're, you pay lawyers to cover you for that situation where you do go to divorce court. And that's one of the reasons why it's really important to think through these issues at the beginning. And you have to just accept the fact that this may not work out and that there may be disputes, there may be situations where a breach of contract has occurred and you need to be able to execute on that. That's one reason. Um, another reason to have clarity and detail in these agreements is because it helps both parties execute what they need to do under the contract, okay? So if you have a very general one paragraph provision that says each party is gonna be responsible for complying with the FTC Act, Hmm, I give this now to operations. I give it to the quality assurance. I give it to regulatory affairs. They read that paragraph and go, oh, okay, now what do I do? <laughs> okay, I, real, I understand that there's a general requirement. Now, what do I have to do specifically for this situation? Contract doesn't say, right? Hmm, that's not gonna be easy to execute. And then the third reason is the clarity is important with the FDA. So if an FDA investigator comes in and wants to understand better the relationship between you and a supplier, you know, who's responsible for getting the 510K? Who's responsible for doing the complaint investigation? Who's actually executing the recall? Who's filing the 806 report if you have a recall? Hmm, I go back to that general paragraph, I'm not really sure. Uh, you know, confusion is not your friend in an FDA inspection. The investigator wants to see very clearly delineated roles and responsibilities so they can figure out who is responsible for what. So those are three really good reasons why you're spending the next 45 minutes with me.